This is the Chuck Smith Show on Cape Atlantic Live, giving you the latest news on all things mainland regional football. Now here's your host, Nick Costco and Mustangs head coach, Chuck Smith. What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Chuck Smith Show right here on Cape Atlantic Live. I'm your host, Nick Costco, and of course with me is mainland head coach, Chuck Smith. Coach, appreciate you joining me as always. Final regular season week of the year already then playoffs next we got to ask you right off the bat i mean the season just flew by here in 2023 yeah it always does it seems that way nick uh yeah we always talk in the beginning of the season how fast the season goes once you get into the routine of the regular season uh you know because fridays come real fast and all of a sudden you stack the fridays and now we're at the last regular season uh game on the schedule and uh you know it does it it, it flies by quick it really does you know it it makes the school day go fast makes the school year go fast and uh, it, it, you always tell the kids to appreciate every moment because you don't realize how fast it goes by and you don't want to ever have any regrets behind it. You didn't do something because of how quick it goes. Yeah, absolutely. It just it seems like it always flies by every year. Uh, you know, you, the, you see the schedule move up to week zero. So you're playing in August before even school even starts. Sometimes you get two games in before school starts. So you guys are now 8-0 and on the season. A big win over Clearview at home to conclude your homestand. Uh, in the regular season before the playoffs inevitably come next week. But you have a rivalry game coming up on Friday night on the road at EHT for the Kiwans Trophy. But before we get into that, of course, just a first reaction to this win over Clearview. Again, another dominant performance by you guys. Steady offensively. And, of course, the defense was absolutely outstanding, causing a lot of havoc. Uh, I know there's probably more points than you wanted to give up, I, you know, breaking the shutout streak. But I, I would say overall, a good performance at you guys once again. Yeah, overall, it was a great performance. We were satisfied with it, you know. Um, We've played Clearview a lot over the years. It seems like, you know, I've been back in mainland for eight seasons. I want to say we've played them six times already. You know, whether it was a consolation game years and years ago, uh, end of the season type out of conference crossover game. Um, they're always a solid team. They're always well coached. They're big, you know, physically big, strong up front. Um, you know, it's always a, a, usually it's a, a very close contest. You know, we've just been fortunate the past couple of years to be on the the other side of it, you know. Um, but usually it always came down to, I'm, I'm telling you, historically, it was probably always a one score football game. I remember one year we scored, on, you know, we scored on a late touchdown just to win the game. But uh, but it's, it's, a, it's a good win for us, you know, against a, a quality opponent. Absolutely. So they are on the uh, door, basically the, not the outside looking in yet, but they were assist, they were listed at 16 this week in Saturday Group 4. So potentially a playoff rematch in one week from now. So we'll wait and see on that as well. If they're able to get in, they might be coming back to Linwood for uh, game number two here in 2023. So uh, just a couple of other big things that you saw in this one. I know John Franchini had a pretty good game uh, throwing the football. Obviously, you guys were very balanced uh, running the football as well as always. Defense came to play, though. I, I, say, I know there was points given up towards the end, and I know it was kind of just I don't want to say you guys were coasting there, but obviously you know you, you got personnel changes towards the end of the game, running clock a little bit, but a lot of turnovers caused, a lot of pressure in the backfield. I thought the defense for you guys on Friday night really, really stepped up. Yeah, our defense has really carried us through the season, you know, um, and they played very well for three quarters the other night, uh, you know, because they have a talented running back, a nice run game. Uh, they hit us with some passing early in the game, some play action to their tight end on a crossing pattern. But they held tight, and like you said, we caused a few turnovers. And, uh, you know, our linebackers played phenomenal in the game. Uh, J.J. Sinclair, I think, had 17 tackles in the game. And Rocco DiBiaso had 16 tackles in the game. You know, we had a couple turnovers with our corners with Antonio Tartaglia and Jake Blum picking off passes, you know, some pressure up front. And on offense, you know, we ran the ball well. Cohen Cook only had a few carries, but he had over 100 yards rushing. And uh, we blocked the perimeter well again. We, we were pretty much able to do what we wanted to offensively. And for probably the third game in a row, our quarterback was very efficient and effective passing the football for us. So, you know, when we were clicking all those cylinders, you know, we're, we're a pretty good team offensively and defensively when all those things are happening. Absolutely. So just keeping it on the defensive side of things, and we'll look at some of the highlights from Friday night's contest. You mentioned Tartaglia. He had the interception early on in the game. You guys were rolling early on, already up 7 nothing. He gets this pick, and you guys end up going up 14 nothing later in this later in the game here in the first quarter. Yeah, this is uh, – you know, I'm so uh, proud and happy for Antonio. He's a senior. It's been in our program and really was just a sub-varsity player heading into the season. And we had kind of an opening at that corner position, and we are uh, – we gave him first shot at it. He was a senior returning, been in the program his whole time, 
And uh, we gave it to him, and we really didn't know what to expect, to tell you the truth. We weren't sure if he could hold on to it or not. And uh, he had a lot of competition there. And here we are going into the ninth game of the season, and he's the starter out there still. So it's a tribute to him and his work ethic. And, you know, he's a little guy, but he plays so much bigger than what he is. And it was nice to see him get an interception, his first one uh, of his career there. And, uh, and that kind of led to the next play, which was a big momentum shift in the football game right early in the game. Yeah, just about to say, yeah, he he does he's he's obviously undersized maybe for the position, but and, and you don't want to say it as an insult, but he does play a lot bigger, as you mentioned. Very yeah. physical. Obviously, he's he's a bit of a ball hawk and again, if I nailed that or got his first interception. He's, he's so a you tough man- little dude, man. He's a tough dude. Yeah, absolutely. So you mentioned the very next play, you guys get back on offense right here, and it's just basically a pitch and catch right between John Franchini and Jamie Tyson. Yeah, it was a play action play. Uh, you know, and uh, Johnny has two reads on it. You know, his first read told him what to hit. And uh, he hit Jamie on that post pattern right down the middle. And, you know, when Jamie gets behind a defender, he's a hard guy to catch up to, as we've seen throughout this season. And, uh, you know, like I said before, the quarterback was very effective uh, throwing the football the other night. And that was a, you know, that was a pinpoint pass right there to put us up two scores. What's it say about that connection right now between John and Jamie right now? I mean, do you feel like it's just getting better and better week to week? I know you guys are still a run heavy and a run first type of offense, but you mentioned, you know, later in the later in the year, the bigger teams and of course the playoffs come around. You gotta be able to throw the football. You said it week to week, but I feel like their connection is now starting to really, really click uh, compared to what we saw earlier in the season and even last year in 2022. Yeah, and you know, in order for our run game to be efficient, um, we need to do a great job in the passing department because we can't just rely on that because everybody's going to crowd the box. You, know, you see that week, the weekend, you know, somebody tries to take something away from us and in order for us to be better, we have to be able to throw the football. And, uh, you know, Johnny and Jamie had a connection last year and uh, it's continued to grow and develop this, this season also. And uh, I know they have a lot of faith in each other. You know, all quarterbacks have that one receiver. That's like kind of their go-to guy. And, you know, we have a lot of weapons on offense to throw the football to, but, you know, in the offense that we run, we really just run with one split end. So he's he becomes your number one target most of the time. One more on Jamie Tyson real quick. Yeah, he, he's just so talented. Obviously, he will be playing football next year at the, at the next level at Villanova. Probably going to be switching over to the defensive side of things, but he could play both ways, obviously, very effectively. You look at him as a wide receiver. I mean, is it just the way you guys run your offense? Is it a mix of both of where he could just beat guys one-on-one? I, I feel like week to week, this kid is just about 10 yards down the field past the next closest defender. I mean, he's getting wide open on some of these throws. Yeah, he's he he he's the type of player, you know, you know he's good. And you know he's good coming into the season after how he developed last year as a junior. And uh, this year, it just seems like he's one of those guys, and we have a couple guys this year that have continued to get better and better on a weekly basis. And Jamie's one of those guys, you know, he was very obviously good on the defensive side. And uh, we needed him to develop and get a little bit better on the offensive side. And that's a tribute to his work ethic, his pattern running, uh, his concentration on catching the football uh, and his blocking. Because, you know, if you don't block in our offense, you're not playing. It doesn't matter where you are, um, even at receiver. I mean, we take a lot of pride in how we block at receiver and on the, on the outskirts with our wingbacks and so forth. And uh, the guys know that. And we have a great work ethic in practice all week doing that stuff. And uh, it's just nice to see Jamie just continue to grow and grow and be one of those, you know, I don't want to say big, big time football players, but he is that for our football program. Yeah, absolutely. And again, you mentioned the blocking. Seems like he's always the first guy down the field to make that key block down the sideline, of course. So we'll flip it back over to the defensive side of things as well. Uh, this is Jake Blum now getting a pick six. This really put the game, I, w- I mean, I guess I want to say out of reach in that first half. It really uh, put the stamp on it. Of course, you know, again, your defense very opportunistic and Jake Blum making one of the biggest plays of the season uh, for him personally. Yeah, Jake's a sophomore on our football team and he's had some rotational play at running back for us, uh, spelling even Cohen or uh, Rocco in the backfield. And, uh, you know, we wanted to plug him in on defense, get him some time there. He's been kind of in the mix. He's right on the fringe of always playing. And uh, he made a great read there and explosion. He's a really good athlete with a burst of speed, as you saw in that. And he had a great kickoff return later in the game uh, after this series, really, you know, when uh, Clearview went down and scored uh, late in the second quarter. And, uh, you know, you can see it there, just his speed and his burst. He's, he's very athletic. And, uh, you know, the future is bright for him. He's a great uh, athlete in every sport. He's one of those guys that's just good at basketball, good at baseball. You know, baseball is probably his number one sport, but he's a heck of a football player. And he's one of those guys that's so athletic, 
you know, he could play quarterback in our offense. He plays running back. He could be the wide receiver in our offense. He could play safety. He can play corner. He's one of those guys. He can return kicks, as we saw. You know, so uh, really happy for him and very happy that we have him for a couple more seasons. Yeah, only a sophomore, as you mentioned, two more years. could really become one of the next uh, great two-way stars in your program. So last play here, Coach, looking at the highlights against Clearview on Friday for the big win uh, right before the half. And this was just a tremendous sequence where you guys were able to get the ball back, went right down the field, and the, obviously to end the half right here, uh, John Franchini hits Rocco DiBiaso in stride for the uh, touchdown to go up 35 Yeah, this is right after Clearview had scored once, and they made the score 28-7. to And uh, Jake had a great kickoff return with like 20-some seconds left in the half. And uh, the previous play before this, we got sacked on a play action. And we, you, you know, we took a couple timeouts here and there. But uh, we went with a play action play on this. And Johnny had his one-two read. And he saw the number one read open. And he fired it right down to Rocco. And Rocco is another guy who, you know, he's a great running back, a, a very good blocker in our scheme. And uh, the last few weeks, he's showed himself to be an admirable receiver also. So, you know, when people want to, you know, load up on Jamie, you know, we got a couple other guys that we can go to, and uh, Rocco really shows that ability. He's not, he's got great hands, great uh, concentration and vision onto the football, and, you know, that, that nice burst of speed to get behind people. No, the two-way star for you guys, obviously, uh, very physical on defense next to linebacker J.J. Sinclair. So we'll look ahead to EHT coming up on Friday. Before that, I'll say a quick break. It's Chuck Smith Show right here on KB Atlantic Live. This KB Atlantic Live production of Mainland Regional Football is brought to you by... Charlie's Bar and Restaurant, The Doc's Place, Diorio's Bar and Grill, Shore Orthopedic, Golden Nugget Atlantic City Casino Hotel and Marina, Edmonds GovTech, Darcy Johnson Day Law Firm, and Ulmer's Appliance Service. Welcome back to the Chuck Smith Show right here on Cape Atlantic Live. Nick Costco alongside, of course, head coach Chuck Smith of the undefeated Mainland Regional Mustangs. Coach EHT is coming up, and you know they are in a bit of a rebuilding phase right now. The Eagles are over in South Group 5, but a longtime rival uh, between the two schools, uh, rivalry, I should say. Uh, just first impressions on them. They're very big. I do know that. Uh, they do have some skill players, but again, it just hasn't really broken their way. First year under Rob Davis coming out of re- basically coaching retirement to come back and take over that Eagles program. Just the first presence of uh, EHT coming up on Friday. Yeah, it's always a tough game with EHT. It's been a rival for a very long time since the school opened up back in, I think it was 1983 was the first contest on Thanksgiving Day. Uh, You know, that was our Thanksgiving Day opponent for a very, very long time. Um, You know, and then when Thanksgiving games kind of went by the wayside, you know, we tried to make it our last game or first game of the season. And then, you know, we played them in the uh, Battle at the Beach last year's first game. And then we wanted to kind of see if we could play it the last week of the season, kind of get back to the way it used to be. I don't know if it will stay that way. Who knows when the realignment happens. But uh, and that was really to give both teams more flexibility in week zero. Um, but, you know, Coach Davis is a veteran coach. He's been around for a long time. You know, he did a tremendous job with the program up at Barnegat. And, uh, you know, they're just they're going through those growing pains. And every so often we have to go through those things. I know I've been through it a couple of times when I was at Oakcrest and also here at Mainland. And it's just one of those things you have to get through. You know, you come in with the way you want to run your program and you got to get the guys on board to believe in that. Um, And when you have those seasons where you have only a few wins or so, uh, it's tough because, you know, a lot of kids go by the wayside, uh, get a lot of injuries, you know, and you just got to kind of deal with it and believe that it will be better at some point in time. And uh, they're just in that phase right now. You know, Uh, they have size like they always do. EHT does. You got a lot of young guys playing right now, which, you know, obviously they're building for the future. Uh, They have a very good running back, number four, who was around last year. And we had a hard time with him in that battle at the beach game. And, you know, I know he's just coming off an injury. I think last week was his first week back after being out for a little bit. Um, You know, and and they show flashes all the time. Their quarterback, I'll tell you what, my hat's off to that quarterback because he's taken a beating at times sometimes this year. And he hangs in there. He's played. And when he has the time, he's, he's effective throwing the football. You know, they remind me of the old school uh, Oakland Raiders back in the day, you know, run, run, and then they go downtown deep, you know, um, and they're aggressive on defense, you know, and, and I know they've played a lot of guys over the last few weeks, and I guess they're trying to feel out what, what it's going to be like in the future as they get ready to head into the offseason, but uh, we're not taking them lightly. For us, this is a gigantic game for us because one of the goals we had in the beginning of the season was to repeat as division champions, 
and this is our last division game. So if we win this, we we will clinch that division title by ourselves undefeated in the division this year. So we have a lot riding on this game. And also, you know, for the playoffs, you know, uh, we don't know where it's going to sit. You know, everything's got to still shake out after the final week of the season. I know we have a home game at least, you know, and, uh, you know, we're hoping to be home for the playoffs. But, you know, you know, we're playing a group five team and yet they don't have a lot of wins, but it's still it's still a big game. And just because of the rivalry that it is and the close proximity of both schools, you know, so it's it's a fun game to get ready for. And I love playing over there at EHT because I've seen, you know, I was fortunate as a senior at Mainland to play in the very first game on that field on Thanksgiving Day back in 1983. And then, you know, go away to college and I come back and it's our Thanksgiving rival. And then to be there when they put like we talked in the pre-show about the first time they laid turf down with yeah, the first yeah. game again on Thanksgiving for that. You know, and they've had some tremendous seasons historically. You know, they've won a few uh, South Jersey championships, been in the title game a few times. And they've just been on the downside the, the last few years, you know. And, uh, you know, I'm sure Coach Davis will get things going over there. I mean, that, that, that school has a lot of talent in the hallways. You know, and you saw that last year with their basketball program. All of a sudden, they all of a sudden took the top off with the basketball thing. And uh, they've been consistently good in baseball. And I'm sure they'll be back in the mix at some point in time with football. Yeah, no doubt. Of course, you mentioned the baseball program and the basketball program making it all the way to the New Jersey State Finals at Rutgers just last winter. So, you know, it's, it's a slow process. I mean, I, you know, just obviously full disclosure for the uh, viewing audience out there. This is a EHT alum talking right here. So, to a uh, man uh, alum. Uh, there we go. So co- uh, coach and I have uh, kind of uh, held back, uh, you know, throwing jabs at each other all season long. I'm just kidding, of course. But, you know, going back to my playing days, you know, I'm not saying I was a world beater. I was, you know, just a, you know, I was a fringe varsity guy. You know, again, there was a lot of talent on those teams. I remember the battles my, myself uh, against uh, mainland as well, including my senior year on our home turf. Very, you know, very tough loss uh, back in 20, uh, what was that, 2013? Yeah, 2013 in the fall. So it still sticks with you. I'm sure the, uh, Memories stick with EHT and Mainland alums. You just mentioned it was a Thanksgiving Day rivalry for a long time. So that kind of leads me to, to my next point. I know, you know, you look at it on paper. And, of course, it, people outside both schools are saying, well, May, you know, Mainland, you know, they're, they're, they're the big bad favorite here. They're going to contend for a state title this year. EHT's rebuilding. But, you know, what do you tell your guys in the locker room in the, in the week leading up to this game, knowing that this is for a trophy? And not only is it for your division title, but it's for a rivalry trophy. This is the longtime rival. You you have to go five minutes down the road, and then you're in the neighboring town. So, what's this? I mean, do you kind of explain what this game means to your team each and every year? Oh, absolutely. You know, uh, especially this week. You know, Saturdays are always about the game on Friday night, and we don't talk about our next opponent until Monday. And when we had our team meeting on Monday, right away we just talked about you know in the beginning of the season we set goals to attain during the season. You know, one of them was always to beat Ocean City you know, be undefeated at home during the regular season. You know, uh, another one is to be division champions. So this is that another check, you know, box box to check out uh, on our list. And, uh, you know, the team has remained focused. There hasn't been that air of we're so much better than them this week. You know, we've uh, we really had a tough, hard practice today, Um, you know, just to make sure the kids are level headed. You know, they're not, you know, ahead of themselves or looking into the future you know, of, of the playoffs, you know, we got to take care of business and what's in front of us week to week. And I think that's a great thing about football. If, as long as you maintain your focus, it really keeps you within your goals and within yourself with that. And, uh, you know, we've, we talked about it. this is a huge game for us because to us to win a division championship is huge for us because that's a year that goes on a banner that sits in our gym and sits out on our field forever. And uh, I always tell the kids, you know, you can look at that and think back when you're older and you're bringing your kids to mainland or you attend a game as an alumni and you can say, hey, I was, I was on that team. And you instantly remember, you know, some of your teammates, some of the big games, the plays and things of that. And I always say to them, you know, I always take a lot of, of pride and uh, pleasure when I walk through the gym, knowing that I was associated either as a player or as a coach with the various championships we've had in the school. And when I look at those, the banners in the different years, I could still see the faces of the kids that played, that I coached personally and so forth. From the teams, you know, when I walk the track and I look at the championship banners, you know, you remember all those times and all those years and even some of the tough losses that you had that year. Absolutely. Those memories that you make for a lifetime. And those are, I got to tell the kids, these are the things that went down the road. You can't appreciate it now because you're so young. You know, you, you don't look 10, 20 years down the road. But these are the games when all of a sudden you run into your old teammates and you're out and about. You know, these are the things you wind up talking about, you know, as I'm sure you do. And I know mm-hmm. I still do with my friends and we're out of here like 40 
40 years already, you know, and we still get together and we still have those memories of coaches and players and games and things like that. So it's, it's big for us. This is huge for us, you know, and knowing just that it is a rival, you know, Ocean City is up here on our list. EHT is right there on our list. It's right behind Ocean City. So it's, it's big for us this week. And the kids have remained that focus uh, throughout this week. Yeah, no doubt. You mentioned just you know, look back. And, you know, I'm looking back at 10 years already right. since uh, I last suited up uh, on that field. And then again, final game was at home. So that leads me to my final question for you as we lead into uh, rivalry week with Egg Harbor Township on the road, 6 p.m. For that one, catch out, uh, catch that kickoff as Malin looks to finish the season undefeated and take the division title before the playoffs. So, Coach, uh, your favorite memory? It could be a win, could be a loss, it could be just be a moment from a game, moment leading up to a game. I know most of these games took place on Thanksgiving until the last couple of years due to the realignments, of course, the schedule changes. But I mean, there has to be one moment in this rivalry. As a coach or player, what sticks out the most about this game with EHD? You know, it was always such a hard-fought battle for the most part. If you look at the scores historically, there weren't many blowouts. There may have been a couple when we had really great teams back in the 90s. You know, uh, maybe back, you know, when EHD had their little run of – Titles, you know, there was a, there was a year I remember when Tim Watson was playing for us, who's my defensive coordinator now. Uh, when they had the Parker 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 uh, connection over at <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mac titles, and we played on a Friday night, you know, of Thanksgiving weekend because of rain and so forth. And like we mentioned before, HT's field was terrible before before the turf was installed, and we lost to them fourteen to seven. And they went into that game as a, a overwhelming favorite, you know. Um, I can remember back in 1995, we were undefeated and headed into the uh, South Jersey Group 3 final against Woodrow Wilson, and they pulled an upset on us. They were a 500 team, and they beat us, I think, 13-7 to over at EHT. And then I remember back in 2008, um, we were undefeated that year, and uh, we were heading to Southern for – or we were going to host Southern in the South Jersey Group 4 final, and EHT had us 27-7 to midway through the third quarter. And I can remember I was the offensive coordinator that year. And I can remember being, I can, I can tell you, I can remember this <laughs> standing on top of the press box on a sunny day, freezing cold and thinking to myself, man, how are we going to get these guys up for the championship game next week when we are getting our rear ends kicked? And just like that, we came back and won the game 30 to 27. You know, it was, that was a year we had Brent Caprio and we yeah, yeah, yeah. on the ball a little bit, hit a couple passes. We were able to stop EHT's pass game. And uh, they were a very good team that year. You know, the following year, they went to the uh, championship game in Group 4, and they had a talented group of juniors that year. And we won, you know, literally with, I think, like two minutes to go in the game, we scored a game-winning touchdown to put us up. And that, I think that game is one of my favorite high school memories ever because I remember my quarterback had like 101, 102 fever at the time and played the <laughs> game, flu game at sick. And, you know, him running, we went to a heavy package, and we ran uh, Q power, Q32 power. And we put our defensive tackle, who was 310 pounds, in the backfield in what we called our meat package. And uh, he ran right behind his big rear end. My quarterback was 210 pounds. So that's 500 pounds of people coming at a five-yard start. And uh, we scored. And I could just remember the emotion of the kids after the game, you know, kicking and crying and all that stuff after the game. So I think that one's my favorite uh, memory of the series. And one of my favorite memories all time of coaching. Absolutely. I, un unfortunately, I can't look back as fondly. Uh, I was o I was over during my high school time. We were over. I believe. Uh, I think it was, uh, Coach Coffee was still coaching in 2013. Uh, yeah. I believe uh, your first year was. I believe it was 2014. or Was it 2015? 16, I think. 16. Okay, so I got. You know, I'm getting my years crossed at this point. But Coach Coffee, I remember they came in. Uh, 2012. They, they, it was a home game for us at EHT, and then uh, 2013. Uh, sorry, that was the road game. And then 2013 was my senior year. That's when we hosted a uh, close game throughout. I think it was, we were down by eight at halftime, but there was, there was, there was a late touchdown by mainland. I put up ahead by two scores. And that was pretty much all true. I do. I do recall though, not to my own horn. I did recover a fumble that actually was not ruled a fumble because uh, a penalty brought it back. So uh, I, I unfortunately cannot lay that to my uh, short high school football fame, recovering a fumble on special teams that would have set us up, but I digress. Uh, Coach, good luck on Friday. Uh, big you. game against EHT on the road. Um, we'll talk next week, of course, when the playoffs come rolling around. You guys are yeah. uh, obviously going to be hosting at least one uh, for at least one home game in the, in the sectional bracket. So we'll see how the chips fall, and we'll see where everything uh, lines up uh, when it comes to Saturday night and, of course, Sunday morning. So we'll talk to you then. And once again, good luck on Friday. Big game to end the regular season. Yeah, thanks a lot, Nick. I really appreciate it.
All right, cut. This is the Chuck Smith Show right here on Cape Atlantic Live.